In this episode, we're going to look at two tools you can use to improve your dialogue audio for film and video, namely normalization and compression. Check this out. All right, here we are in Adobe Audition. We're going to illustrate how to use compressor to improve the sound of your dialogue for film and video. Now, I have a sample clip here. Let me just play through the first portion of this so you can uh, see where we're starting and then we'll show you how to get to the end. Now one of the big challenges with recording dialogue is that a lot of times you can, there can be a big difference between the loudest parts and the softest parts. All right, so the first issue we have of course is that the dialogue is just way too quiet and so we really need to bring those levels up. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and select all for this clip and then we're going to come up here to favorites and choose hard limit or sorry normalize to minus 0.1 db now you'll just use the normalize function function in whatever editor you're using and these same principles apply you just got to find it in your own editor this is what they looked like before and this is what they look like now so all we really did was all of the loudest parts we, we just increased the volume of everything in essence and we brought the loudest peaks so that they were at zero db now if you're not familiar with how to read a waveform monitor like this zero db is the loudest part and that's represented here at the top and at the bottom the quietest parts are going to be here in the middle and then of course we have a scale here so you can see it starts at zero db gets quieter now we got minus 4, 5 dB, minus 7, minus 9. It, the last number it shows in this particular one is minus 27, and then per perfect silence is going to be minus infinity. So you can see the loudest parts are at the tops and the bottom, and the quietest parts are going to be right here in the middle. All right, so that kind of solves one of the problems for us, is that now we've brought the volume up overall. So let's go ahead and play that now so you can see what that sounds like. Now, one of the big challenges with recording dialogue is that a lot of times you can, there can be a big difference between the loudest parts and the softest parts. Okay, so now you can see what that sounds like. Now, what we're going to do is go ahead and apply a compressor to bring these quietest parts and the loudest parts a little bit closer together so that it's a little bit easier on the ears of your viewers and it's it makes a, the dialogue a little more present and it brings it forward some. So let's go ahead down here to our effects rack. Now before we apply the compressor I want to put a hard limiter in here and that's just really kind of a safety thing. Um, if you don't know what it sounds like when audio clips or distorts, um, what you should do and that's all this is saving us from. It's kind of a safety thing for that. If a waveform tries to exceed 0 dB and go into the plus dB range, um, that's called clipping, in the digital world at least. So once that happens, what it sounds like is very unpleasant, and it starts to distort. It has a kind of a buzzing noise. Your speakers will be overdriven. So if you don't know what that sounds like and you want to hear what it sounds like, go ahead and record on whatever you have to record, whether that's your camera or an audio recorder. Crank the gain up as high as you can, or close there too. <laughs> and uh, what, you'll, what you'll do is just record a couple of seconds of dialogue, bring it back to your computer, turn the volume way down on your computer and play it back to hear what it sounds like. And you can understand what I mean when I say it's pretty unpleasant. So we're putting this hard limiter here just so in case we get a little too aggressive on the compressor settings, it's not gonna start clipping. It'll actually cut it off before then. Then we'll come back in here and let's apply a compressor. We're gonna use this tube modeled compressor. Which compressor you use is not that important. I wanna use this one because it has pretty simple control and it's pretty simple to illustrate how it works. Now, pretty much every compressor has a variety, these, these similar settings here. They may be called something different. Some of them have more, some of them have fewer. In general, they all have something along these same lines. So we have threshold, we have gain, which is sometimes called makeup gain, and some compressors don't have it, but most do. There's a ratio, which is the compression ratio. We have attack and we have release. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much detail on attack and release here. That's a little bit more advanced and um, I don't wanna spend a lot of time doing that, but we can come back and go into more detail if that's something of interest to you. But I'm gonna go ahead and set the attack to two milliseconds for my dialogue and the release to 100 milliseconds, which is the default setting for release. Let's come back up here to threshold and talk about what that means. now. When you're using a compressor, you get to tell it which of the peaks you want it to, or which of the with the wave peaks here you want it to actually compress and to affect and to reduce the, the volume on. So what you do is you set a threshold. So let's say, look, if we're looking at this waveform here, 
and I come across here, I can see I have a lot of peaks that are above this level right here. This is minus 9 dB. Um, but a lot of my dialogue actually um, falls below this. So you can see a lot of this material in here is actually below the minus 9 dB range. So why don't I set my threshold at minus 9? And what that means is that anything that passes this threshold that's louder will be compressed. And anything that's quieter than this or um, does, not does not pass this threshold um, will not be affected. So let's go ahead and set that to minus 9. Okay, good enough. Now, um, what that means again, anything above that is going to be compressed or made quieter. Anything below that will be untouched. So let me just uh, bump this up here real quick and show you what that looks like. So we've set our, again, our threshold to minus 9. Let's apply it and see what happens. And bam, yeah, you can definitely see that any of the peaks that were above minus 9, which is right here, have definitely been compre compressed and reduced in size. And what that means is they've been made quieter. And anything that was below that has been largely unaffected, so we haven't really messed with any of that. So the next question you may be asking yourself is, well, that's all well and good, but now we just have a quieter signal overall. Well... That's true, but there are some other settings we can use to, to address that. Now, let's go ahead and undo that real quick. And let's go back into our compressor. Now, let me explain one of these other settings here. Okay, the next most important setting is this ratio. And this is telling the compressor how much to reduce those peaks that do exceed the threshold. So, for example, I've set it here 4 to 1. So what that means in practical terms, let's say I had a peak... Uh, that exceeded my minus my 9 threshold by 4 decibels. So what that would mean is 8, 7, 6, 5. So it would be at minus 5. It peaked at minus 5, and that could be this peak right here. So this peak right here is at minus 5, and because it's 4 decibels above the threshold, which is 9, when the compressor processes that, what it's going to do is it's going to take those 4 extra decibels and squash them down to 1 decibel. So that's a, that gives you an illustration of how it's deciding how much to compress. So anything that's four decibels will become one decibel. And typically with dialog, I like to, to operate with that somewhere in the two to four range. I don't like to get too much more aggressive than that because it starts to sound really unnatural. Um, but again, and again, here we're even kind of pushing it just sort of illustrate how a compressor works. But let's go ahead and, and run with that setting. And again, just to show you what it looks like, just like before, boom, it it drops all those peaks that are above minus 9 and brings them down a lot closer to the rest of our material. Now, again, that question I asked before, well, that's great, but now everything's quieter. So how do we fix that? So let's undo and let me show you one more setting in there. Back to our compressor. All right, we'll bring that over here. Now, we also have this makeup gain, or in this case, it's just called gain. So what I'm going to do is run the compressor and fine-tune this setting. And what this gain does, or makeup gain does, is it takes the volume of everything and increases it by the amount we tell it. So now that we've kind of squashed those peaks down, we want to bring everything back up closer to 0 dB so that it's nice and clear and loud for our viewers. So what I'm going to do is run through this clip here. And while I'm doing that, um, I'm going to tweak that makeup gain setting. And what I'm going to be doing is aiming for our peaks to fall in this minus 3 to maybe minus 1 range. I want to get them right in there. And of course, there'll still be some range, so it'll be bouncing around some. But uh, that's what I'm aiming for. So let's go ahead and give that a go. Now, one of the big challenges with recording dialogue is that a lot of times you can there can be a big difference between the loudest parts and the softest parts. And oftentimes what that amounts to is that the start of the sentence is a whole lot louder than the end of the sentence. So one of the things that you can do... Okay, that worked out pretty nicely. So we ended up at 5.4 decibels of gain. So makeup gain, we added another 5.5 decibels back after we had compressed everything. And let's go ahead and apply that so you can see what it looks like. Now again, notice how there's... There's quite a bit of range here. You know, we've got our quietest parts that are down in the minus 15 range, and our loudest parts just barely this one, maybe this one, come up close to zero. But when we apply it, okay, a lot of things come up a little bit closer. So you can see we have a lot more writing up near the, the top of the range here. And even these quieter things that used to be at minus 15 are now at minus 7. So and maybe minus nine. So we still have some dynamic range there, but we've definitely brought it a lot closer to the top here. And let's see what that sounds like. Now, one of the big challenges with recording dialogue is that a lot of times you can, 
there can be a big difference between the loudest parts and the softest parts. Okay, and just for comparison, let's go back to the original so you can hear what that sounds like. Now, obviously, this is really, really quiet because we haven't even normalized it, but let me go ahead and normalize it first. And then let's compare the two. So this is the original, just normalized. Now, one of the big challenges with recording dialogue is that a lot of times you can... Okay, so notice that near the end of that sentence, it sort of started to really get a lot quieter. Here's the compressed version. Now, one of the big challenges with recording dialogue is that a lot of times you can... Now, a couple of things. I am no master at uh, compression, so still kind of learning here. If you found something there that you know uh, that could improve that process, please let us know. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those for us down in the comments below, and we'll go ahead and do our best to answer those questions, or maybe someone in our little community here will have an answer. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do so, and we'll get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and your sound for video. Talk to you soon.